it's not really a panel discussion, I have to say, it's a fishbowl. So um, I would invite everyone to get involved. So you have a number of opportunities. Of course, you can always use the chat to give a comment or ask a question, and we are monitoring what's going on in the chat. But we were trying also uh, to find a, uh, an electronic version of a fishbowl. You know, a fishbowl discussion normally works in a way that you have some the speakers on the uh, um, plenary, on the panel, and then you have one or two empty seats. And everyone who wants to join the discussion just goes up and sits down and then continues to discuss and then leaves and so on. So the idea is that we try and do that electronically. So feel free to raise your hand. And uh, once you raise your hand, I will call you uh, to, the, uh, to the panel and you will be given the floor and will be highlighted. Okay, so that's the plan. I nevertheless will now start with uh, our colleagues uh, who have prepared some inputs. And I'm very happy to welcome Sabine Lauers, who is an adult educator. So one of you know our people who are working on the ground in adult education in Flemish Belgium. We have Aitea Valentini, who is chairperson, I think your president, chairperson of All Digital, our sister organization in the digital area. And we have Sophie Doskarova, who is from the European Commission and works in the unit for adult learning and is, I think, responsible for, among other things, for upskilling pathways. So, Sabine. We are going now to discuss how, what we can do in adult education to, you know, to, to create a human first digital space. You know, we want humans to be in the, uh, in the center. And we believe that adult education is very important for that. Uh, but what does that mean for adult educators and trainers, teachers, staff? Do you get, you know, what's your experience? Do you get enough support to have a holistic approach for, for that? Um, how difficult is it? What's there? Yeah. Can you give us an insight from your point of view? You know. Mute, okay. Hello, hello everybody. I'm Sabine and I'm working in Antwerp in Flanders. Uh, for 20 years now, and I'm a language teacher. Uh, normally, I'm speaking French or Italian. Uh, so excuse me if my English is not perfect. Eh? Uh, so um, I was interested uh, on partic participating to this uh, uh, conversation because the title was what's the role of adult learning in creating a human first digital uh, society. And that's that's what I interested in, uh, human first digital society. Uh, there, uh, there's have a lot of uh, doing about uh, the shift, uh, the digital transformation and so, but humans have to be first. And I'm working in a Flemish uh, adult education organization with a lot of uh, groups, target groups, uh, younger people, elderly people. And uh, yes, there's some friction about the, the human approach and the digital approach. Uh, um, and on my, yes, of course, I'm a language teacher and I think adult education, especially uh, language learning, of course, uh, needs a holistic approach. Uh, it shouldn't be uh, considered uh, as a quick fix to economic problems. Uh, it's not only about developing communication skills in a working context, uh, but also about developing uh, life skills. Uh, and in my uh, lessons, uh, when we are learning a language, uh, a modern language, it's about uh, life lessons uh, that we, we share. Uh, 
in another language. Yeah? And so things like tolerancy, European citizenship, uh, um, Yes, that's very important too. And for me, it's even more important maybe than the digital uh, thing. And for me, the digital, uh, it's just uh, to reinforce, uh, but it's not uh, uh, the, um, yes, the thing on it, it's not the aim, uh, the goal, uh, the final goal. And uh, uh, a month ago, I was, uh, at Prague, in Prague, uh, for a conference, uh, international conference about, I, I look a little bit, be ready for the digit, uh, digital trans, transition in adult education. It was a very interesting um, conference, conference. And there I learned, learned that it's possible, uh, of it should be possible to create uh, in adult education, uh, it's about uh, developing a conscious, open-minded, creative, and social-oriented thinking. And so that's for me, adult education, it's about this open-minded, uh, creative, and social-oriented uh, thinking. So, and that's for me the most important thing. And it's not so easy to, Yes, to this message, we have the feeling in Belgium that there is a lot of pressure from uh, politicians uh, to focus on work-related skills. Huh? And we, especially language le learning teachers, we, we are not uh, comfortable with this. Huh? Mm -hmm. So that's a little bit uh, the yeah. most, most important thing I think. I yeah. Think, yes. yeah. Thank you so much. I mean, I I think it contributes very very or complements very much what we are doing at mm -hmm. the European level. And I'm always happy to hear that you know what what we work for is also true for the people who really work on the organizational mm -hmm. level and with people. You know that the need. You know. Uh, realizing the need to be more open uh, for for life skills and so on so mm. i think you have highlighted one of the key points uh and and i have heard in the conference uh quite a few contributions that say we need a broader approach mm. in pedagogies mm -hmm. and so on uh, i think it uh the next um New Generations Pedagogy, it was called yesterday. So thank you for that. I'll leave it for here, but obviously we'll come back to you uh, at the later stage. I tell you, I think, as I've said, you are probably in one of the best positions because you are both a, a, a digital and an adult education person. And uh, what do you think we should prioritize when it comes to that? How, how is your approach? And maybe just a few words about your social hackathon. I found that very interesting, but yeah, go ahead. <laughs> of course, of course. Thanks a lot, Tina. Thanks for the invitation. And uh, first of all, just let me say that uh, when we were doing yoga before, actually my first project on digital skills for elderly people was starting with the yoga unit. So I was very, very <laughs> impressed about it. Uh, yeah, uh, at All Digital, we, we actually have uh, the opportunity to compare uh, a lot what's going on in the European bubble, let's say, at European level with the practice from our members who are adult education providers mostly. So it's very, very important. And um, I would say that um, I completely agree with the state with, with the say that uh, digital is not uh, cannot be the focus itself any longer. It's something that goes transversal. You see it even if you take into consideration the, uh, the policy level. Now we were used to analyzing e inclusion policies, digital inclusion policies. Nowadays, it's very hard actually to find a specific digital inclusion policies. Why? Not because we don't take care of the topic, but because this topic is positioned across the board as a strategic element for the treatment of specific or sectoral objectives. So it's really, it's really very wide. And another level that I wanted to, to mention is the fact that, um, uh, of course, starting from the European 
priorities, but also much more now also at the national level, there is this uh, transfer, this which from basic digital skills to advanced digital skills. And pay attention, the advanced digital skills doesn't necessarily mean to be uh, high tech uh, knowledgeable. It means really another approach towards digital uh, education. So um, to me, uh, digital education and training needs really a more coherent approach and more uh, cohesive delivery system at Europe, at the European level, of course, but uh, then again, uh, going to the member states and the increasing exposure to uh, the interaction with the digital contents. Uh, Gives, uh, brings to the floor another level, which is very important, which is life-wide education, where mm -hmm. the digital component is becoming more and more important. And mm -hmm. here, self-awareness, self-assessment, being able to recognize what is the path that I have to follow in the digital education uh, offer that is everywhere nowadays, is the key to me. This is what will really make the difference. Yeah. And be because you just uh, told me to mention the, the hackathon, <laughs> uh, I will conclude just saying that we had just had uh, last week the Hepale Hedu Act in Italy involving the uh, formal education center for adult citizens. It was great. The best comment that I received from, uh, from the trainers was, Look, I, I worked with this classroom for two years and I never had the impression to be so close to them. Why? Mm. Because we use a digital uh, excuse actually to, of course, create, create a learning opportunity, but to let trainers and learners think about the future of learning in adult mm. education. It was really great. That sounds really, really good. And we might consult you on uh, some of the methodology also for, for us for next year. So um, I, 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 I think that, that also uh, gives a bit the, uh, the, the other aspect uh, of digitalization, the opportunities that we have. You know, partly we look at it from a, you know, how do we manage and so on, but how do we uh, leave no one behind, which is important, but there is also this additional aspect that that uh, digital skills and uh, digital work give us the opportunity to bring more people together. Can I just say I'm I'm always very happy when we have our meetings and. Uh, I can say that we have a lovely mixture of people that I've known for a long time, ever since I started in EAEA, and I'm very happy to see that our former president, Sue Waddington, is around. So hi, Sue, lovely to see you. But on the other hand, there are also quite a few colleagues that I, uh, you know, that I haven't met yet. So, uh, and uh, I think we also have a very good mixture of, pe you know, people from very different countries. So this is one of the advantages of uh, being here online uh, to have that uh, possibility. So um, let's also think about that positive part. Now, Sophie, you have the uh, task uh, uh, invitation to talk about the policy approach. So um, um, how how does that all fit with policy and what can policy do and especially upskilling pathways? How do our concepts fit with upskilling pathways and maybe the other way around? <laughs> Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Gina. I see that the upskilling pathways are pretty much in line with what also Sabine and Alto mentioned. So I am very glad to 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 hear that. Uh, of course, uh, as uh, looking uh, at it from the perspective of the European Commission, uh, of course, nowadays the digital skills uh, um, and also uh, boosting participation in adult learning are in the heart of the of the European policies. Uh, we have now the European Pillar of uh, Social Rights Action Plan, uh, which sets some ambitious targets. Uh, there is. Uh, 
uh, the target uh, for participation in adult learning, uh, which indicates that 60% uh, of all adults uh, should take part in training every year by 2030. And we have also a target uh, related to, to basic uh, uh, digital skills. And uh, that is that at least 80% uh, of those age, uh, age 16 and 74 should have uh, basic uh, digital skills, uh, which is uh, an important uh, precondition for inclusion and uh, participation in the labor market, but also, also in society, which is important as well, because we need skills not only for the labor market, but also for society. Nowadays, uh, uh, we need uh, digital skills almost for, for everything. Nowadays, uh, we are using online environments for, for working, for booking a doctor's appointments, for checking information, banking, uh, uh, etc. So other learning nowadays is very, very important and uh, and can also contribute to social inclusion and breaking the circle of disadvantages uh, so so it has it plays really a very very important role and uh, we have um, a initiative called upskilling pathways uh, this was adopted already in uh, 2016 as a council recommendation. However, uh, we see still that, uh, that the upskilling pathways are very, very relevant. Uh, uh, we still uh, need uh, uh, to, to boost the, the efforts and, uh, and have for more and more people to gain uh, basic, uh, basic uh, skills. Uh, the upskilling pathways are about, they are actually, we, when we are talking about putting the individual uh, in the center, the, the upskilling pathways are pretty much uh, uh, focusing on, on uh, providing the individual with integrated uh, uh, support um, to provide them with uh, uh, skills assessment, then tailored learning offer, and also validation and recognition opportunities. It is very important to have this whole package uh, uh, of, of this integrated approach uh, to be able to really empower the individuals and help them to progress towards uh, uh, reaching the basic skills. The upskilling pathways are a little bit bro uh, broader than the, than, than the digital skills. They focus on uh, numeracy, literacy, and the digital skills, but digital Digital skills are very important, uh, very important part of it, and of course, also upskilling pathways are uh, accompanied by gui guidance and outreach measures because we, of course, need to uh, need to motivate the individuals to, to learn. This is especially important while we are talking about the low skilled or low qualified adults, because very often they are facing different barriers uh, uh, to, to learning. So, so the outreach measures are very, very, uh, uh, the outreach measures are also very, very important. Uh, but uh, also, to, this is not uh, the only initiative, of course, uh, which, the, uh, which the Commission has uh, on, on, on adult learning, uh, upskilling and reskilling. Now to even more uh, boost the participation in learning and to empower all individuals uh, to, to learn, uh, the Commission is preparing an initiative on the individual learning accounts, uh, uh, which should be hopefully adopted by the end of the year. And, uh, and this initiative also aims to, to prepare the individuals for the changing labor markets, the, the digital transition, and also provide the individuals with financial and non-financial support. Thank you very much. I, that, that was excellent to, to run through a complex <laughs> policy area with upskilling pathways with the key points. Uh, thank you so much. I think that was very, very uh, understandable and comprehensive. So we can see there are poly policy initiatives that support a broader approach. Um, um, maybe I can already say we are also looking forward to the new European agenda for adult learning, which 
is not official yet, as far as I know, it still takes a few weeks. Uh, yes, uh, it should be out uh, hopefully very soon, uh, by, by, by the end of the month. Uh, yeah. We hope if everything goes well, and uh, also this development uh, shows us that adult learning is very much on top of the, of the European agenda. Yeah. yeah. I um, um, we will uh, let me announce that uh, in EAEA we will uh, very probably do an update or and the presentation uh, online on the upskilling pathways either by the end of uh, you know just before Christmas or then in January we we but we will send that round because we think that uh, the European agenda and uh, together with upskilling pathways really creates a, a policy environment where uh, a more holistic approach is also possible. So uh, please uh, keep in touch with us. And uh, thank you, Sophie, for that input. Anyone who wants to join the panel, anyone who wants to contribute, or are you all already extremely tired with all the inputs? My suggestion I, is... I just, I just want yeah. to, to say that uh, I would like to thank you for the colleagues, people in within AA who organized this event. I think we have to thank for um, the uh, people working in Brussels, and also as members of EAEA who contributed, but I also would like to thank for those people who uh, provided uh, keynotes and uh, made a valuable input uh, to the group work. Thank you so much indeed. Thank you, uh, Balaj. Absolutely. Uh, it's been a fantastic uh, job that has been done uh, by uh, the colleagues in Brussels, uh, but also in the working group. Maya, you wanted to come in. Uh, yes, thank you so much. And I appreciate a lot uh, your effort to organize this conference and to make it really interactive. And it's really great to see to see many colleagues uh, colleagues here. Uh, uh, I would like to thank to to speakers to the panel and to continue the question of how we can how we can create uh, how we can support human first approach in digital um, digital education. Uh, I would like to add the importance of research that includes uh, learner's voice. I think we had uh, intense uh, one or two years experience um, in online learning and that we can really base further decision and discussions on, um, on uh, research, uh, uh, which includes uh, participation. And I talk, uh, as I work with students, I talk a lot with, uh, with them about how they feel in um, how they feel as uh, all lectures are online and they share, they feel um, it influenced their personal well-being and they often feel demotivated because they do not have opportunity to socialize with each other. Their identity as learners is not present uh, so much. And I would uh, also like to remind on the topic, a topic that was a uh, few years ago when I was, uh, when I was there in, um, in the board, it was power and joy of learning. And um, as bell hooks uh, emphasize, joy of learning is something that is really important. And I'm afraid that with, um, uh, if we focus only it, that in online environment, we use um, joy. Uh, so, and I'm also afraid that uh, if we, that uh, we can see a kind of, disappearance of public space for learning and adult education, which I consider, which not I consider, but which is crucial for, for democracy. Uh, so this is my concern. Then the, the, the third one, the third point I would like to make is related to uh, digital literacy or digital skills. And I think it is not only important to learn how to use, how to use uh, the tools that are available to us, but um, um, thinking about what we shared actually in the workshop of AI and uh, democracy is really to understand how it works 
and uh, to understand algorithms, to understand the business model that is behind uh, um, information that are served to us. So I guess we have to think more about critical AI literacy and uh, as adult educators to see what can we do with, uh, with these uh, issues. So thank you again, and uh, yeah, I just felt the uh, need to share to share my concerns <laughs> here. No, thank you, Maya. Absolutely important, and I can only say uh, the issue of AI and how we could work with that. That would make a fabulous Horizon 2020 project. <laughs> Maybe we can take some of the ideas. You're absolutely right. We should uh, we should also work more with research and so on. Sabine, you still wanted to come in, please. Yes, I um, wanted also uh, my concern. Uh, I didn't we didn't spoke about it. I think uh, is uh, the lack of support for adult education. Uh, <clears throat> so when I'm now teaching, normally I should teach a language, but uh, last year, the last two years, I, I, I will, it was as if I was uh, an ICT teacher. I had to in invest a lot of time in how working with the tools. And we also have a, a program uh, to realize and we lack time. Eh? There is not enough time. To, to learn the things we should learn because there is, and so in our uh, schools, as we say, in our centers, uh, we have created now uh, uh, digi coaches, uh, digi coaches, digital coaches, and that's a great thing, but uh, they are overwhelmed, uh, overwhelmed by the work. Yeah? And so it's uh, always a teacher who has to, uh, yes, come up with solutions and so on. Uh, and there's really a problem. Uh, so there, there should be more digital support uh, uh, and, and also invested in um, yeah, paying people for doing this, uh, this uh, together with the, the workers uh, and the teachers. So that's for me a personal concern. Yeah, um, I, I think that is a very important issue that we need to keep underlining uh, when we talk uh, the work that has been done by teachers and trainers in adult education in the last two years has been enormous. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, not only continuing, but continuing on new platforms, on new ways, um, uh, technically, but also methodology methodologically etc so uh and and very often with too little support absolutely true mm -hmm. okay i think we're slowly coming to an end i would invite you uh if you still want to do that uh if you could take a moment and maybe think about is there anything you're going to do different when, and differently um based on what you've heard at the conference have you had any inspiration to say i want to try this or i want to try that or i'm going to consider this or that so if you have any of that please uh put that into the chat otherwise you will be able to do to do that or maybe send us a message and so on uh then um uh, you will be um, able to do that in the evaluation and so on. So uh, here we go. And if there is no more comment, is there more comment? No. Then I would hand over in a moment to uh, Dina, who is one of the good fairies in the uh, of the conference. So, uh, of course, my uh, team in Brussels has been excellent, especially, but not only Ola as the great champion behind it, uh, and uh, Christine as the coordinator of the working group. But Dina is also a representative of the working group uh, who has been really, really inspirational and working very hard to put together the context paper but also to prepare the conference and so on and i see some of the people nodding in the background like diana from romania niece of course who hailed her from lisbon and i'm 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 
sure I'm now missing some people. So please, uh, it's, uh, I, I apologize for that, but your contribution has been really, really important. So thank you, uh, Dina and colleagues. And as that, I'm handing over to her uh, to sort of give us a short wrap up as a board member and the working group and because she's just a fabulous person. <laughs> Thank you so much. You are, you are very generous, Gina, and all the wonderful team. I'm very happy and very grateful to learn and work with you all in these two days. Can, congratulations to the speakers. Thank you very much to Professor Antonio Figueres, my professor, as I call it. Forgive me, but it's, it's also like this. Congratulations to the EAA family, uh, to the fantastic EAA staff, to our wonderful digital working group, Angelica that yesterday was brilliant sharing uh, the, the paper and Kristen for the fantastic team building attitude and efficiency, you are great. We will for sure integrate all the precious contributions that we have learned these two days. And I invite you to share with us because it is a collaborative and participatory work, of course, share with us what you are thinking after the conference, after, because we learned so much and it was so inspiring. Maybe we need some time to elaborate and to have more time to share uh, because we, we need to work more together. So building democracy in a digital world together by improving pedagogy, restoring dialogue, support guidance, not just to learners, but to trainers, empower everyone, empower people, engaging ICT people, engaging researchers, embracing the wholeness. Um, of course, creating a, a human first digital society with values in the heart. Uh, the importation of uh, values was very uh, here present in these two days. Inspired by everyone yesterday and today and the lovely music moments from Marco. I love music, you know, <laughs> you know, you can see it. Uh, imagine Ale can, what can Ale can do for a better world for everyone. It's the real power of power and joy of learning. As we said, uh, ale must go on. So carry on, carry on together, life wide and lifelong with critical education and learning, leaving no one behind. Thank you very much. Congratulations to all health and happiness. Thank you.